Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The Scream of the Eagle, another adventure of George Valentine. My dear Mr. Valentine, I hate injustice even when it happens to one of my own relatives. Matilda Jonathan, a distant cousin, young girl, tragic case. If I weren't so busy with my own investment service, I'd help her myself. But then again, I might not. Because a man in my position can't afford to have people misconstrue his intentions. And I'll thank you not to misconstrue that, either. No, sir, I don't mean intentions romantic. Because this Matilda really isn't much of a one for waltzing, being more of the outdoor type. Nor is she much of a one for looks. Just an ordinary girl with nothing special coming her way except except five million dollars, which she won't get unless she has some really high-powered help and fast. Because, Mr. Valentine, have you ever heard of a Blackstone bloodhound named McNeil? Well, sir, that lawyer will spin Matilda out of her millions faster than you could say San Quentin. So will you please jump in there fast and do something about this? Matilda, I happen to know, is going to see McNeil this morning at his office, 10 o'clock. And be careful, you're up against a man who can squeeze the eagle and really make it scream. Yours very truly, Jameson P. Edson. Hmm. The guy's really worried about poor little Matilda, isn't he? George, make the eagle scream. I don't know the what... The eagle they print on bills and coins, Angel. The almighty dollar, the fast buck. Only in this case, there seem to be five million of them. Well, anyway, George, here's your hat. And I wrote McNeil's address down for you on a piece of paper. The lawyer... Hey, 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 not so fast. I'd like to know a little more about the poor, innocent heiress before I go tearing out after... Well, the letter came while you were down having coffee. I already phoned Mike Landry down at the Daily Record. Ah. He looked up the files. Matilda's father was a big mine owner, made his money in South America. And I think you want to take the case all right, George. Because Matilda Jonathan died over a year and a half ago. <laughs> Mr. McNeil's very busy this morning, sir. Yes, so I see. I won't take much of time. If you could just tell me what it's about, maybe I could... I'm not quite sure myself. The original idea was... Well, does the name Matilda Jonathan mean anything to you? Yes, sir. It means I won't be able to go to the baseball game this afternoon. I won't have time for lunch. Oh, it does. Well, suppose you tell me... If you'll just take the last chair in line, you'll have your turn. Now, just a minute. Clear it up, will you? It means I'm going to stop reading law and get me a soft job as ringmaster in a flea circus. It means I'm going to... Come on, now. What's the trouble? Matilda Jonathan is dead, isn't she? Sir, you see all these men with the briefcases and all the girls? Well, every one of them claims she's Matilda Jonathan. Valentine, I'm a skeptic by nature. All right, Mr. McNeil, and I'm just as confused. I don't believe some of the people all the time or any of the people any of the time. I know, I know, she's dead. She's not dead. Million, million, who's got the million? You see any hair on my head? No, of course you don't. Have an aspirin. But uh, you're the lawyer who took... I'm the sucker who took a will, Clarence. I don't see. Matilda Jonathan's father, two years ago. Mining man. Never lived in this country. Oh. Doctors ordered him up here. He came with his only daughter. Took a place in the country to die in, and he did. He died. Okay, okay. I follow you that far. But there's more to the story than that. Well, aside from handling their baggage when they came and finding an upcountry real estate man for them, I'd never seen the Jonathan's. Daughter, at least. So I had to pitch into a will probate, flying a little blind. Go on, go on. But it was all in order. Only one principal heir, the daughter, would have been just routine, only then it has to happen. What happens? Daughter has to go morbidly tragic about her father's death. This is all before the will is settled, you understand? And then she has to go swimming, all by herself, apparently. Got drowned. Drowned? Mm. Ah, so that's how Matilda Jonathan died. But what brought her back to life? What uh, 
multiplied her. The whisper of the eagle, my friend. Here's an old photo taken of her. Taken in South America. Uh Uh-huh. Well, it's all out of focus. Only, wait a minute. Hey, yeah, there is some kind of a big bird in this shot. A hawk or something flying over her. Yes, yes, eagle's no joke. Falconry. Matilda liked falconry. Ha! If she'd liked her own looks a little better and had her photo taken a little more often... Get back on the rails, will you? I'm in tune. Don't worry. Her father's will has never been settled. You understand? And all those people are out there claiming to be Matilda Jonathan for the very simple reason that she drowned, but her body was never discovered. Oh, it's beginning to dawn. It's come up like thunder around this office, my friend. You should hear the stories I'm told. I just wandered off, sir, says one. I was kidnapped for that year and a half, says another. I've been living with the fish in the bottom of the lake, says a third. Now give me my daddy's five million. (laughs) Yeah, people like money, all right. But uh, this kind of fraud wouldn't be easy. You must have some things to check against. Very few things, Valentine. Anyway, the phonies are just an echo. Follow up with the real headache. A week ago, this item came out in the newspaper. You see it? No, no, I didn't. Amnesia victim, claimant for Jonathan Fortune. Amnesia. Young girl who's been living in a small mountain town for the past year and a half claims to have recovered her memory. States that she is the one and only Matilda Jonathan, whom police have previously assumed to have drowned while swimming alone in the murky waters of the lake. Has been living under the name of Irma something or other. And she's got a good story. Not like the others, oh no. They're just trying to copy her idea. But Irma, she remembers Spanish. Remembers what her supposed father looked like. All sorts of things. She's done a lot of studying, Irma has. So you think Irma's a phony, too, huh? You got a letter from one Jameson P. Edsel, didn't you? Distant cousin of Jonathan's? Mm, good spy system. Mm-hmm. No, just two and two. Edsel's been hounding me for the past two weeks. He says he knows this girl is the right one. Well, if he's a relative... Johnny! Ten o'clock, isn't it? Nearly quarter past, sir. Well, if that Irma girl is here, tell her to come in. Yes, sir. Uh, let you take a look at her. Oh, and Johnny... That sailor, that Juan, uh, whatever his name is. Juan Fernandez, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Phone his hotel. Ask him to come over. I'll take care of it. Look, Mr. McNeil. I'm still with you. Miss Jameson P. Edsel, who was so sure that Irma's really Matilda, never saw that dear rich relative of his until now. He's also in his will for $1,000, which he won't get until it's settled, one way or the other. <laughs> you think everybody's a fraud. I think Matilda drowned like the beast said. Yeah, it's tough lake to recover a body from happened to other people up there. If the money doesn't go to this girl Irma, or if the real Matilda doesn't turn up, like a, after a reasonable length of time, then the money all goes to a charity, a nice deserving charity. Well, do you blame me if I'm a little skeptical about so this? Tell me, who is this Juan Fernandez? The clincher. The only one I could find. Sailor, Bolivian. He used to be a servant of the Jonathan. I had him flown up here. Oh, I get it. Probably the only person who'll ever be able to look at this girl, Irma, and tell us whether excuse she's me, really... Sir, excuse me, but that girl, she was here just a second ago, but she left. I can't find what? her. What? Took off, huh? You uh, told her about this Fernandez coming to identify her this morning, McNeil, huh? Yes. Well, I guess that does it, doesn't it? I don't know what it does, uh, sir, but whatever it is, it won't be done. Huh? What do you mean? No, sir. I telephoned Fernandez's hotel, like you said. Only somebody named Lieutenant Riley was there. The Bolivian is dead. No, he wasn't murdered. He was hit by a truck. It happened last night. Yeah, but Riley, after what we told you... I know, I know. He wasn't hit by a truck. He was murdered. How could I tell the difference? How could anybody... But if it was a street accident, surely the truck driver what could I... What driver, Miss Brooks? It was hit and run. No witnesses to help? Of course not. It may be murder, but we'll never prove it. Mm-hmm. Riley, you say there were a lot of old scars on Fernandez's arm. Yeah. Now, they don't have anything to do with... Oh, the... but they do. Yeah, they prove he knew the girl, that he really did know her in the old days. Eagle scratches, that's what they are. What? Scratches from handling birds, Miss Brooks. Hawks, eagles. Yeah. McNeil talked about falconry. Yeah, we got a little on that ourselves. There was some stuff in some old magazines. This guy taught Matilda what she knew about handling the big ones without getting killed. Brooksy, did you locate James and P. Edsel? Huh? Yes, George. Mr. Edsel has an office downtown, but he said he'd meet... Come on, let's go. Hey, now, wait, wait, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to chase the other kind of bird lovers, Riley. The ones who make a hobby of the other kind of eagle. Only I don't think it'll be the eagle who does the screaming.
In heaven's name, what is this? All you've done since you picked me up is make insinuations. I don't know anything about any murder. I don't... No, 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 no. Next block, Mr. Valentine. Okay. Mr. Adolf, why were you so sure that this Irma is really Matilda? But I'm taking you to see her, aren't I? Ha, ah, ah, ha, there it is, Valentine. The Sterling Arms. Now, after all, I never told you that I was positive or that I could prove she was... Oh, backsliding now. Huh? The man who hates injustice doesn't want to get caught being... I beg your pardon, sir. I'm a man of some standing. I'm not used to being talked to like a... Like a... Oh, yeah, sure. Be careful. She may not be here. Last time I heard of her, she was scared by something. So maybe she's running now. Or maybe she's all ready to claim $5 million. But whichever way it is, you don't want to spoil anything. Not if you're working together. Matilda. Matilda, dear. Oh, Matilda. Try calling her Irma. Matilda! Uh, well, she... Stepped out for a moment, Mr. Valentine. Not here, huh? All right, Buster, let's have it. What? And never mind the big shot routine. Well, I don't know. This investment you're service you run, I should have spotted the pitch, the racetrack squint. Which horse do you like at Holly Park in the third? Get your hands up. Uh-huh. How much is Irma paying you to swear she's your relative? But I Or is don't it you that's paying her to act the part? Is it both of you trying to defraud an estate out of five million? I said to let You don't go know anything my... about a murder, do you, huh? When the guy who gets killed by accident happens to be the one person in the world who could foul up Irma's and your claim. Mr. Vallant, we should find her. Perhaps she is in danger, too. Oh, she's in no danger. The job's done. It's all over. With Fernandez out of the way, all little Irma has to do to cash uh, in is what, to... What are you doing? Uh, Matilda. Huh? I was... I was just... George, catch her. Here we go. Matilda. Oh, poor child. She's bleeding. Look at her arm. Yeah, what are all these bandages? I was... A man in a drugstore bandaged it for me... Took a lot of skin off. He said I should get a doctor, but I thought I could come up here first. Slow down now, easy. It'll be all right. He knocked me straight over. I threw up my hands to keep from falling on my face. What did? Cousin Edsel? Are you my cousin? I'm Irma. I'm Matilda. I had to leave an office this morning because I felt sick again. I don't know who I am. I don't care who I am. All I want is for cars to stop coming up behind me like that. So fast, and then Lee... Get run, George. The same thing that happened... All I want is for people to stop trying to kill me. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Did you know that both new cars and older cars can be slowed down by gum? Yes, gum can rob them of power and pep, can make your car act logy under the best of driving conditions. This engine-sticking gum comes from the impurities existing in most raw gasoline, and the only way to get rid of those impurities is to refine them out. Now, Chevron Supreme is the gasoline that's super refined to get rid of gum. For best car performance, for extra power, and for that new car feeling, depend on super-refined Chevron Supreme. Count on this premium-quality gasoline, too, for full mileage in the kind of driving you do, whether it's everyday hometown driving or out on the vacation highway. Try a tank full tomorrow. You'll get and keep that new car feeling. Ask for Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say... And mean, we take better care of your car. And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. One man might have been able to tell whether an amnesia victim named Irma is really Matilda Jonathan, the heiress who is supposed to have drowned over a year and a half ago, but whose body was never found. Yes, Juan Fernandez might have been able to tell about Irma, but Juan Fernandez is dead. 
And if your name is George Valentine, you realize how difficult it's going to be to tell about Irma, because just when you thought you'd found a simple explanation for her, along came Irma herself. And it seems that a similar attempt had been made on her life. Why? Well, that's Lieutenant Riley's question. She's not responsible for the South American's death, or why would it happen to her, too? That's plain enough. Only... Yes, Lieutenant, it doesn't answer whether she's Matilda or not, whether I should recommend to a court that she be just handed $5 million, nor does it explain why anybody should possibly want her out of the way. After all, if she doesn't swindle us out of the money, it goes to charities, no one else. You know, for a while there, McNeil, I went out on a long limb and thought Edsel and the girl were working together. Don't apologize. We're all stupid together. Only why do you still use a word like swindle? What makes you so sure she's phony? Because I don't trust anybody, Mr. Valentine. I've got a sour stomach from trying to digest this greedy world. <sighs> Look, Valentine, we're rechecking all the evidence. But is it really likely she could have just disappeared and got amnesia? And Fernandez just get accidentally killed right now? And she just get accidentally bumped by somebody? Oh, oh, oh. oh brother, I ask you. <laughs> Me, I'd rather ask Irma. Or uh, is it Matilda? How's her arm now, all right? No, it wasn't bad, George. Just the skin. They put on another bandage. Hmm. It, it was silly of me to faint like that. But I was in the hospital just a couple of weeks ago. Virus pneumonia. High fever. That's what brought my memory back. When I was sick... You mean when you remembered that you were really Matilda? Yes, that's right. Uh-huh. How did you lose your memory, uh, Matilda? I... I think I did go swimming that day. They found my clothes and all, so I must have. Uh-huh. But I remember putting on some old jeans and things, going out on the highway, just wanting to get as far away from there as I could, from the lake, from the house, my birds, anything that reminded me of my father's death. And then you don't know what happened? Well, sort of. I mean, I had a fever then, too, and somebody took me to a doctor in a small town there in the mountains. I thought my name was Irma for some reason. When I got well, I used that name to work in a department store. I see, but didn't the doctor understand or oh, try yes, to... Oh, he went to the police. But I guess they just didn't check down there. And they thought I was dead anyway. Ah. Uh, well, five million dollars is a lot of money. If it's mine, I should claim it, shouldn't I? But it's not important enough for, for things to happen. Like happened to Juan. You remember Juan Fernandez from South America? He was the one who taught me not to be afraid of the birds. What kind of birds did you have up at the lake? Hawks? Falcons? Well, they were just, yeah, you know, local varieties. But I did have one that I brought from South America. I remember I called him Bobo. It took me years to train. He was a type of eagle. An eagle? <laughs> Wouldn't you know? Oh, for heaven's sake, Valentine, here we go again. Yeah, that's right, McNeil. Back to the other kind of eagle. What's become of those birds in the last year and a half? I don't know. Banks handle the estate. Well, it's been held in trust, so nothing would have been sold yet. Yeah, I guess so. Birds are still there, probably. Local real estate man makes a trip up once every week or so, check things over. He might know, okay, but Okay, I... let's all take a trip. And, Ronnie, we'll round up James and Edsel, too. Valentine, what do you think you're going to prove by this? Irma or Matilda, excuse me. Uh, how big is Bobo? About eight feet, I think. I mean, his wings, tip to tip. Plus the usual beak and claws, I suppose. Someone who'd never really worked with a bird like that before, someone Bobo didn't recognize, might even get killed. Down this way, still the same old cages. Yes, I remember. Everything is so overgrown, though. Have you been taking care of the birds, Mr. Jenkins? Well, been up here every week to feed them. The size of their cages, though, part out in the open this way. They don't need much tending. Well, I see what you mean. More like tennis courts with a net. Oh, no! Can't reach you, won't hurt you. Some of them get sort of friendly, not like that bird, though. He still charges me like an express train. He either turns up his nose or gets mad and won't let me near his cage. Yeah, these look plenty tough, all right. You don't mean that Bobo... Uh-oh. That's him. Yes. That's Bobo, Mr. Valentine. Yeah. About three times as big as the others. Um, you haven't been saying much, uh, Matilda. Why don't you tell me about it? 
This is all rather an experience coming back here for the first time. George, look at his eyes. He just sits there staring at nothing. Mm -hmm. They look like agates, huge agates. Yeah. Say, uh, Jenkins, let me have the key to the padlock there. You run back and see if Lieutenant Riley's car is here yet, will you? Sure, Mr. Valentine. Thanks. George, you're not going to open the gate. No, no. Might as well wait. Whatever you want, Matilda. Whatever you think, I... Hey, your arm, the one that's hurt. Isn't it the one he perches on? It's all right. Doesn't bother me, and the bandages are thick. Well, that is the routine, isn't it? You go in there and sort of hold up your wrist? Yes. Yes, you... Usually you wear a long glove, but I well, don't have... There's some gunny sacking over there if you'd like to wrap it over the bandage. All right. Maybe that's a good idea. Yeah. Those claws look like razors from here. Yeah. How about it, Bobo? You like strangers? Now, what do you do when a stranger leans against the gate of your cage? Oh, oh all right, all right. Never mind. Hey, Mr. Valentine, what was that? Well, hello, Mr. Redsell. We're all here now, huh? Yes, I ran ahead. I wanted to see you for a moment. I... Uh, oh, good heavens, that, that's quite a bird, isn't it? Uh-huh. What do you want, promoter? Well, I thought you should understand my position, that's all. When a man acts in good faith for the sake of someone he's never met in the past, but he thinks needs help now, uh, Matilda isn't nervous as she is. It's quite a strain, you know, for her. Go on, go on. What's the matter? Uh, isn't that dangerous? Huh? The lock there. You left it loose on the... Look out, she'll drop it. Yes, but the gate, you... Get out of the way, you fool. The gate, I'm sorry. Open, I said look out. The gate, George! Get out! Hey, get the bird, get him! Well, I'm sorry, I didn't Shut know. Shut up, Buster, the bird's loose. I saw that was the idea, so... Let go of take me, Take it I... easy, Riley, take it easy. He didn't want the girl to get hurt. It's done now. Well, I'll say it is. There goes the second identifying witness. You never saw a jet plane climb like that. Yeah, Mr. McNeil, Bobo's in good condition, almost out of sight. First, a South American, now a bird. Come over here, young lady. I think it's about time that we... Here it comes! Look out! Look out! He's diving down again! He won't hurt you. He just came down to my wrist. You see? Nice, Bobo. Well, how does that strike a skeptic, Mr. McNeil? Probably not one person in a million could do that. All right, get him back in the cage, will you? Thanks. Uh, show that to a judge, and you'll get your money all right, Matilda. I knew I was right about you, my dear. I was just telling the... I'm afraid even the skeptic has to bow his head. Oh, yeah, it was a nice demonstration, all right. After that, nobody would argue. Except me. What's that, Valentine? Well, let's look at a few things, Emma. Like your arm there. The arm you got skinned up saving yourself from being knocked flat on your face by a car. I don't understand. When you're knocked forward like you said you were by a hit run, how can you expect to protect your face with only one hand? Why isn't the other arm hurt? Oh, for heaven's sakes, that doesn't mean... I think now I know why that arm got skinned and how. You did it yourself, didn't you, Irma? And then got some bandages over it so we wouldn't look. Oh, Valentine, for the love of... Well, I know it's confusing. That's what they counted on. But you see, I just didn't trust anybody. Not even an eagle. If you think that bird isn't dangerous, you're crazy. A nice, well-fed, healthy eagle that chases away the man who brings the food every week. Well, doesn't that give you the idea that somebody else might have been feeding that eagle, exercising it, and most important, training it? But Matilda trained it years ago. And Irma's been training it for the last year and a half, maybe coming down on weekends. I certainly have not. Then will you show us that arm of yours, Irma? For five million, people won't do anything. They'll do most anything, even smart people like lawyers. Of all the crazy ideas, Valentine, what are you trying to prove? McNeil, you told us you took care of the Jonathan's baggage when they first arrived. And probably the worst job you ever had, because they brought Bobo from South America. What a time you must have had getting him through customs and all. Now, why didn't you mention the bird earlier? Why didn't you tip us off there was a perfect way to prove whether this girl was Matilda? Yeah, wanted us to prove it for him. Now you're catching the ball, Riley. But he hinted a little with his double talk about the other kind of eagle. That's right. You haven't a shred of evidence. A rich man dies. No friends in this country. No close relatives. Leaves a lonely daughter that nobody's paid much attention to. Suddenly she goes swimming and she drowns. Police can't find the body. But a little while later, a girl named Irma shows up in a mountain town nearby. And she does a great job of acting out amnesia. I won't listen to any more of this. Sister, your tough job was getting over here to train the eagle. You had to have help. Well, Riley, suppose that's why Juan Fernandez was brought up here. McNeil would have known about him from the Jonathans. 
Poor Fernandez thought he was just training a new devotee of the sport, getting somebody else ready to handle Bobo. And then he found out what they were really up to. Yeah, the minute Irma claimed to be Matilda, they had to get him out of the way. Come on, sister, the arm, let's see it. Get away from me. You had to scratch that arm yourself. I remember the old scars Fernandez had on his arm. The real Matilda would have old scars from handling those birds all her life. Let go, you're hurting me. Any cuts you've had are more recent, from the last year and a half. And a doctor can tell how old a scar is. Mr. Valentine, I'm a lawyer. I look at logic. I live by it. Don't you see how ridiculous it is to assume I'd go ahead with such a plan when at any time the real Matilda's body might be recovered from that lake? I'd never get myself that far out on a limb. Mr. McNeil, you've got a good argument there. So good it's going to hang you. The only way all this really makes sense, makes a neat, safe plan out of hiring Irma for her job, is that there is no body in that lake. It's probably around here someplace buried. And the police will never stop till they find it. Now that we know you murdered the real Matilda Jonathan a year and a half ago. Yes. Yes, he killed her. I had nothing to do with it. Look out, Valentine. Grab it. Money, 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 Mr. Redsell. The scream of the eagle. Once McNeil sold everybody with that demonstration by Bobo, he would have just waltzed the phony Matilda through court. Together, they would have lived happily ever after. I think you did a wonderful job, Mr. Valentine. I don't quite understand the way you've been acting, Mr. Edsel. Oh, well, Miss Brooks, I... Well, I was just taken in. I certainly didn't want to see any relative of mine. You couldn't collect your thousand dollars until the will was settled. You would have said Brooksy here was Matilda. Oh, Mr. Valentine, I assure you a paltry little one thousand dollars... To a man in my position. Well, uh, you did hire us, you know, and sooner or later you will be getting that thousand dollars from the estate, so, George, since Mr. Edsel doesn't care about money, maybe we should give him a bill for our services right now? Yeah, but then, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I... For one thousand dollars. No! 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 Well, the eagle flies again, darling. <laughs> Angel, that's the scream of a stuck pig. You're thinking about your vacation trip and wondering how you can get your car in good shape for safety and comfort without a big cash payment. Maybe you need a set of tires or a battery or both. But there's that problem of ready cash. Well, the solution is really easy. You can get tires and a battery on convenient budget terms at your standard station or independent Chevron gas station. Sure, pay as you drive over a period of months. Why not get those tires and that battery tomorrow? You'll have more peace of mind, more driving comfort, and more personal safety. Whether you're starting out on a vacation or not, ask tomorrow about the easy budget plan for your car's needs. Ask at an independent Chevron gas station or a standard station where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Wally Mayer is Lieutenant Riley. Ted Osborne was heard as McNeil. Jane Webb as Irma. Howard McNear as Edsel. Stan Waxman as Jenkins and Bill James as the Eagle. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. (laughs) 